Pai nosso que está no céu, santificado em vosso nome. <risos> Churches in Chicago are adding a little bit of sparkle to this Ash Wednesday. That's right, it's being called Glitter Ash Wednesday, and the gesture is meant to be a show of support for the LGBTQ community. Several churches in the Chicago area are mixing in a purple glitter with the ashes. A pastor from one of those churches said she wants to make sure the Christian message is one of love and tolerance. Ash Wednesday is a ceremonial day when Christians are marked with ashes on their foreheads, ushering in the fasting season of Lent. Tonight, a new plan to combat potential TSA security failures at airports nationwide, targeting many travelers' least favorite part of flying, the pat-down. Up until now, TSA officers made risk-based assessments for each passenger, choosing one of five pat-down methods accordingly. Now, a single standardized method will be used universally. Long-standing policy includes the head, neck, arms, torso, legs, and feet, and sensitive areas such as the breast, groin, and the buttocks, requiring sufficient pressure to insert detection. Currently, flyers can opt for a pat-down instead of the screening machine, or be subject to one if TSA detects a red flag. If you're an average traveler, like most of us, we know we're not guilty of carrying anything, but they don't know that. The new policy comes two years after a damaging report that found major security lapses across the country. Weapons and other hazardous materials made it past screening in 95% of tests conducted. According to Houston police, the two young men shown here kidnapped, sexually assaulted, and shot a 15-year-old girl sacrificing her in the name of Satan. I think they're just uh, distraught that they've lost their daughter. In court Thursday, the accused killer smiled and waved for the cameras. From Texas to New York to Virginia, officers are dealing with a rash of murders attributed to a resurgent MS-13, a notoriously violent street gang. First reported decades ago in Los Angeles, the gang now has thousands of members in at least 42 states, according to the FBI. Most are Salvadorian nationals or first-generation Americans. Also on Thursday, Robert Capers, U.S. attorney for the Eastern District of New York, pinned seven murders on MS-13, including the killing of two teenage girls with baseball bats and a machete. Evelyn Rodriguez lost her daughter. This day is a celebration, but also a sad day. Last month in Northern Virginia, more than half a dozen alleged MS-13 members were arrested after a double murder, and according to law enforcement, most of the suspects arrested in these recent cases were in the country illegally. President Donald Trump reversed President Obama's transgender bathroom order last week. Now many are wondering what that means for several ongoing court cases. One of them is the case of Gavin Grimm, a transgender student who wanted to use the boys' bathroom at Gloucester High School in Virginia. When his school denied the request, Grimm sued. The case goes to the Supreme Court next month. But President Obama's transgender order was a part of that case. And now that it's gone, some suspect the Supreme Court may simply push the case back to lower courts to be decided. 
The Vatican faces new fallout this morning over the clergy sex abuse scandal. A founding member of a commission set up three years ago to protect minors from sexual abuse in the Catholic Church has now quit. She accuses the Vatican of stonewalling efforts by the panel set up by Pope Francis. It was better for me to come out and be able to speak about it because these men, they thrive on silence and cover up. Mary Collins, who was sexually abused by a priest as a teenager, tired of what she called constant setbacks in her work on a panel set up by Pope Francis to protect minors from sex abuse. We spoke with her this morning at her home in Dublin, Ireland. To find that there's still a group of men in this level in the church who do not see child protection as a priority, that do not get it in 2017, uh, it's just unacceptable. In her resignation letter, Collins wrote she believes the Pope is sincere in his efforts, but the resistance by some members of the Vatican Curia, or church administration, has been shameful. Sometimes I feel the Pope does make mistakes. He, he's badly advised, but you're dependent in that position, I think, on those around you for advice. Boston Cardinal Sean O'Malley, who heads the commission, said in a statement, we will certainly listen carefully to all that Mary wishes to share with us about her concerns. The only other sex abuse victim on the panel, Peter Saunders, was critical of it and forced out last year.